Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to this last episode of the Big Guns campaign. As a tribute to the Big Guns campaign and the ships that have served in it, as well as a way to say thank you to you as a viewer, I've created this booklet. This contains all of the, uh, the Admiral's logs and Chancellor's logs that I've written for these episodes. The booklet includes screenshots and all the different ships that are... Well, that you might have grown to love over the campaign. You're going to be seeing the Mars, the Turinja. Of course, the Turinja. I mean, she served me so well. Not forgetting the Ariadne. We have all the various ship classes, screenshots, thumbnails, everything. You can get this by becoming a member of the channel, either by clicking the Join button or by supporting me on Patreon. The information about it is down below in the description, as well as the link to sign up. I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, it's the first time I'm doing something like this, and I thought it would be a fitting way to, to bid farewell to this campaign. And I wanted to introduce it to you as this last episode that you are about to watch. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let me know what you think about it down below in the comments. Chancellor's Log, June 4th, 1942. This is it. We're going to have the final engagement with the Austro-Hungarians. After decimating the French, the British and the Italians, there is one major power left in Europe. It's our old ally, the Austro-Hungarians. I have assembled every available warship into one massive fleet and sent them to the Mediterranean. Intelligence suggests that they know we're coming. The Austro-Hungarians are preparing their fleet. Because of their war against the Italians, they have a few dozen ships undergoing repairs. The rest will be most likely awaiting us. This is going to be the biggest naval battle that the world has ever seen. It will be a final show that the Big Guns Doctrine is a success. Our Big Guns managed to swiftly eliminate the French from the board. They were so effective that the British came crawling, begging for peace, after seven of our battleships sunk a massive fleet of theirs. The Italians know full well what these guns can do, as they lost ships before even spotting ours. Now, all that stands in our way of total victory is the Austro-Hungarian fleet. Hey guys, Stealth here and welcome to episode 47. It is now a couple of years later, it is June 1942. I have made peace with the British. And I have gained Ireland, although the game then decided to throw a fit and in fact did not give me Ireland. I have the screenshot appearing on screen right now. I have Ireland. I took it and the British go, yeah, actually. And they decided just to keep Ireland all for themselves. So no Ireland for me. Um, I did get a ton of cash. I now have 3.7 billion in naval funds, so I'm spending quite a bit more than I normally would. I have been researching quite a lot, and on the other hand, I have been sending a battle fleet to the Mediterranean. This is the battle fleet. It is 26 destroyers, 8 heavy cruisers, 17 heavies, 12 battle cruisers, and 13 battleships. Sadly, the big new 20 inchers are not yet part of that fleet. They still need 8 more months. But I am trying to wrap this campaign up. I will not make it all the way to 1950, most likely. That's not the plan. I'm just going to try and force the Austro-Hungarians to make peace. So that at that point, I will be at peace with the Italians, the British, and the Austro-Hungarians. And I will have by far the biggest navy. Although currently, with my 89 ships versus their 209, we still have some work to do. So let's hope that in the next turn, we're going to clash with this battle fleet first. And then there are definitely more ships to be had. Now, first we're getting this little snack. It's uh, two more battleships. Battleship 1588 and 170, both of the Albert class, armed with 14.7 inch guns. That's cute. Uh, for some reason, they're pretty bloody expensive at 191 million. It's displacing 78,000 tons. I'm not so sure what's making them so expensive because they're dead slow at 21 knots. So let's try and find out what these things... Wait, 15 million a month? Maintenance? Oh, mine's 80 million. Never mind, that's cheap. Now, there is one little thing, of course, and that's that I have this massive fleet. Uh, how do you even 
manage shit like this. I mean, it's going to make for a fantastic thumbnail, to be sure. Just, <laughs> how do you manage everything? This is with collision avoidance on, right? I mean, <laughs> collision avoidance on, yeah, right. Um, when it comes to recording and stuttering, I suspect I know what was going on. My OBS recording software was recording my screen and not recording my game. There's a bit of a difference there. You wanted to record the game, you wanted to record the window, not the, uh, the display itself, if you will. Now, over here we have the Heimdall. Uh, since you last seen her, or rather, let's say since the beginning that she's made an appearance, Heimdall has been receiving a lot of upgrades. She's now doing 34 knots. And, more importantly, she has... You can't quite see it, but these are Mark III 18-inch guns. They are extraordinarily accurate at 50% chance to hit right from the get-go. And they now reload in 90 seconds. They have, for uh, the range that they have, which is 50 kilometers with high explosive, they have still a fairly decent amount of pen. 2.1 inch with HE, 4.3 inch with AP. Uh, which is actually less than I was expecting. But then again, we fire semi-armor piercing shells with these things, or semi-ballistics. So we're just going to hope that HE plunges right through the deck of these battle cruisers, sorry, battleships. Um, they look pretty okay, these Austro-Hungarian battle battleships. Um, they are pretty heavily armed secondaries. 16 8.1s and those 8 14.7s. But, of course, the 18-inch guns from Heimdall don't really care. I think for now they can't even see me. That's the other 18-inch shell. Heimdall, which used to be rather incapable of hitting just about anything, is now very capable of hitting our targets. In fact, I believe she is more accurate than some of the other battleships. We got the 19-9s from uh, the Loki, but she only has Mark 1s. I am upgrading to 19 Mark IIs, I think, but it's going to take me a while. Let's see, somewhere in this whole mess are the... There they are, the Z-Class. The Z-Class. These are the sprinters of the fleet. They can do 45 knots. They carry a single torpedo launcher. And they carry 10 5-inch guns. These are the 5-inch 41s, which means elongated barrels. I decided not to make them 5.9s because they were originally designed to hunt down destroyers. Since that is not strictly what we need to do, uh, they're mostly here as a harassing fleet. I'm probably going to start to spread out this battle group on the strategic map because this is just making it a bit complicated to manage. Now let's slow this division down. Make it full speed. Holy crap. That was an 18-inch hit right through the main tower. And over pen right through the funnel. They are trying to fire back. And I think they're starting to see more and more and more of the fleet. Which is not particularly going to help them. Look who it is! Look who it is. Uh, the Mars. Mars has been chilling in the North Atlantic. Part of the blockade against the uh, British. She's now been reduced. Or she's now been uh, freed from that duty. So she can now once again engage on the battlefield. It's not just her. Um, there she is. Not you. Where are your friends? The Turinja. I think she might be one of the oldest serving ships along with the Mars. Still a beauty. Still very effective. She has been enjoying a little vacation, if you will, in the Mediterranean. And so far, has not seen action for years. So she's probably eager for blood. Now, I think we also have... Let's see... Where are the CLs? CAs. Because essentially I set my whole fleet down here. There's the Bremen. What? Why is there a battleship in this division? F-25? No, that's the DDs. Oh, the DDs are getting somewhat close here. Uh, smoke up, boys. This battleship is starting to flood, taking a lot of damage. At this point, I haven't really given my fleet any orders. Because they're just going to go right ahead and demolish these ships. I mean, I've done 3,800 damage, they've done 10. 
This is also one of the reasons why I want to wrap this campaign up, because it's starting to get a bit boring. Um, at least for me, which means by extent for you as a viewer. I'm looking for my light cruisers. I'm not sure where they're at, but they're not here. Because there is one particular light cruiser that really wants to be joining this war. Look at these guys. What are you, a heavy cruiser? Yeah. Mark Graf is still 20 clicks out. And they've done 124. Okay. Defensive fire. What did you do? <laughs> Heimdall lands. Three hits. 567, 1028, and 3496. Flat out destroying this light cruiser. No. Heavy cruiser, in fact. It's not a light. And this guy is probably going to go extensive fire. Because nothing can survive this many guns, this many impacts for very long. Ah, BB-170. Standard turbines? Really? It's cute. I got sonar 3. They don't have radar. <laughs> oh man, they don't have radar. Okay, well, on your head be it. Uh, they're also crewed by cadets. I think these cadets will not outlive their ship. As they're already at 40% crew loss. And I think it's going to get a lot worse. Why am I taking so much damage? What happened there? A 14 inch hit something. Did you wipe out a DD or something? You took 700 damage. Hello? Who's damaged? Which one of you took? Oh. Oh dear. Oh boy. You took a lot of damage there. 4,000. I think the 37 is going to need some repairs. Come on. Come on. You guys are just a speed bump. I want to engage the big fleet. And to force the Austro-Hungarians into a peace. Because I think that by now we have shown the Austro-Hungarians, the Italians, the French and the British that the big guns campaign works. We have the biggest guns and they don't have a leg to stand on. Much less a battleship. Get out of 43% crew loss. Yeah, these ships are definitely more heavily defended than the usual kind. Just that the crew is not. And so BB-170 also surrenders due to high casualties. So that's nice. That is another little speed bump eliminated. Let's see what follows next. And this is what comes next. This is a smaller task force that I've sent out to make it a bit more manageable. It is the Braunschweig, Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse, Mecklenburg, Otto, Poison, Battlecruisers Friedrich der Grosse and König Wilhelm. And then we have a couple of escort ships, if you will. Heavy cruisers, light cruisers and destroyers. Against two battleships, a battlecruiser called Salamander with 14-inch guns. And then a group of their heavy cruisers and destroyers. No light cruisers. It's not a problem. Uh, these essentially are light cruisers because they're almost displacing 4,000 tons. That's a hell of a big destroyer. Eight four-inch guns. They're doing 39 knots. Um, sadly, at the moment, I don't have the destroyers, the U, or sorry, the Z-class, the Zippies, which are capable of intercepting that. So we're just going to have to wait until these guys get close enough, uh, which would be eight-inch guns. So probably in the range of 16 kilometers or less, which they probably will do. And seeing as they all have minimum bulkheads, I think we have some options to take them down. And here we go. The opening shots of this first battle. Well, second battle, essentially, have been fired. We have the enemy heavy cruisers detected. It's a weird, weird thing. They're almost the size that makes me think this is a battle cruiser. Yet, they're packing a lot of torpedoes and they're packing six and a half inch guns. It's, it's a bit of a contradiction. My battleships are all in a formation. They're still working out their place in that formation. So Mecklenburg, Otto, Braunschweig, Kaiser Wilhelm de Grosse and Preussen are all going to be working together. The DDs are all in one big division, screening against the enemy, dropping torpedoes when they have the capability to do so, and also screen against those enemy destroyers. 
We might not be able to intercept them, but I don't think we have to, because they're going to come to me. König Wilhelm and Friedrich der Große are uh, currently unemployed. Let's make those guys do something useful. And all the heavy cruisers and the light cruisers are working together. Under the command of the Gazelle. <laughs> okay, so a light cruiser is leading this party. Uh, it's going to take them a while to get into a useful spot, I suppose. Braunschweig, 3% chance to hit. We need to find something bigger to hit. Something to the tune of a battleship. And they're there. They're definitely in the party. We just haven't seen them yet. They have seen my Kaiser Wilhelm de Grosse, interestingly. Yeah, you're the spotter. Braunschweig, with her 18-inch guns, getting a very respectable 4.5% chance to hit. Oh. You dead. That was 10,000 damage. Not the target. Still dead. Probably a destroyer. Aha! There's your battleship. Focus that guy down first. That should make the Braunschweig very happy because she has her 19... Sorry, 18-inch guns. Immediately at 19% accuracy. The rest are the auto class. So the 16.9ers. Armed with secondary 8.9s, 4.9s and torpedoes. So we have a lot of options, we have a lot of weapons, and we have a lot of firepower against this lonely battleship here. I really need my destroyers to start screening against those torpedoes, because that is kind of concerning. I don't want to get torpedoed, because that means probably fairly lengthy repair time. So let's not. Ah, uh, CLs, Gazelle, over here. There's the Kaiser running at best speed. 1.2k damage already. Sorry, 12k. 1.2k, 12k. Boom! Damage to the main tower, damage to the main gun, some fires. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell? Stop blowing holes in my destroyer. Only a destroyer. It doesn't mean I'm not attached to it. Pull back. These massive fleet encounters do feel like a sort of reunion, for lack of a better term. Is um... I got all the, let's say, famous ships here. Mecklenburg has been with me for a very long time. So has the Otto. I think they're from 19... I don't know, late 1920s? Early 1930s? They've been around for a while. Uh, I'll start putting some secondary fire on this destroyer. You're... Uh, what are you? You're a heavy... Oh, you're one of those fake heavy cruisers. Right. DDs. Do not get in the way of the battleships. Do not get in the way. What's your torpedo range at? 15. Means the rest of the boys aren't in range yet. Yep, that's a couple more 18s. The Braunschweig says hello. Mm. I want the whole div here to start targeting that thing. Whatever the hell that is. Because these cruisers need to go. This is a dangerous torpedo weapon. So I'm very happy to see torpedo destroyed. Uh, warning, or, well, not so much warnings, but updates on this ship. Ooh, opportunity here. You get hit, you dead, because you're a very small ship. Although, this is that almost 4,000 ton destroyer. You're not such a small ship anymore. Boom. Yep, there you go. That's 4.5k damage. What hit you? Just curious, what hit you? I don't know, I've been hitting so much shit that <laughs> it's hard to figure out who did what. Whatever, it's fine. They have also done 3.8k to me. With 6 inch guns, no less. Oh, crap, they torpedoed the what? The mech. Okay, fine. Mech, start changing direction. DDs, everybody come about. Come about. CAs, CLs, we're gonna stern that way. Start moving towards the enemy fleet. And start whacking these guys. Battleship is proving to be remarkably resilient against all this fire, but then again, it's not the ship that needs to die, it's the crew. 
So let's tell the battleships to load the high explosive and just burn the crew right off the ship. This is a heavy cruiser called G-Class. That is some confusing shit right there. Smoky, smoky. You're getting hit. You're getting flooded. Don't be like that. These heavy cruisers are still well at range. It's like the AI ran out of names. CA1859, CA3A8. What are you, the Boar Collective? We're gonna see cruisers called Six of Seven. Find names that the German battleships have far more imaginative. There's the battleship that down to 33% crew lost. Trained crew, yes, but still cramped quarters. 34% crew lost. The G-Glass sinks. This thing is another probably torpedo-capable warship. Damn. Got hit pretty bad, didn't you? Yeah. Okay, you're also going to detach and you're going to fix. So you fall back. Don't care about collisions. Just go. It's really much safer if you fall back. The battleship is now under 40% losses. Anybody else got torped yet? No, we're all good. Let's start smoking up at the lights. Lights are leading a div. And then we got the uh, fairly old Hertha as well. The Hertha class. The Coronel with her bow-mounted guns. And the Dessau. Which has the 10.9. She's one of the new uh, heavy cruiser classes. They're torpedo tanks. anti torp 4. Pretty unbalanced rudder, leading to a fairly swift turning circle. And the 10.9s can deal quite a bit of damage. Now, at this point, it looks like the fleet here... Oh. Is very close together, so everybody starts to die almost simultaneously. I think the DDs here both got in the way. And that's going to be their end. There you go. That's the 47. Uh, yeah, if all the cruisers would like to pitch in and sinking the battle cruiser, then I think that's perfectly fine. Mecklenburg has taken 285 damage, and the rest of the BBs are perfectly fine. There's still another detachment of the fleet there, so we'll just have to swing to the left flank after we're done mopping up. There's really no other phrase for what we're doing here. And this is kind of why I want to wrap up the campaign. Because it's just getting a bit much of seal clubbing. There's not that much of a challenge. Which is sad to note. And um, it's usually this... How should you put this? I'd say it's an inverse difficulty curve in this game. Which means that initially... The game can be quite difficult. You don't have the resources. You don't have the fleet. You don't have the firepower. You don't have the tech. Then you start researching, you start building, you start expanding. And if you just manage your research sliders, uh, your tra crew training and your economy sliders, oh, bye-bye, then what eventually ends up happening, kind of inevitably, is that you just win the war. You just start winning battles because your tech is better and the game becomes easier. The AI starts building newer ships because they have... Well, they ha don't have as many ships anymore, so they're going to have to build new ones. Which they generally tend to equip with better guns. Better tech, better radar, if they have it. So you start seeing more and more weapons, more and more resistance. But you're kind of snowballing at that point. Because your economy gets stronger, the amount of blockade at the enemy, so their economy grows weaker... And through all of that, the game progressively becomes easier. That's what I mean with an inverse difficulty curve. The game just becomes easy. And especially with the AI that is not... Is not very clever, shall I put it that way? Um, especially when it comes to fleet formation and building ships. Yeah, it's just kind of inevitable how this is going to end up, right? So that's why I haven't showed you the last two years. It's been uh, just mopping them up. So 
all I've been doing. Mopping them up. Alright, let's go. Really? The auto had her her magazine detonated. The torpedo from a DD? Ow. Oh. There are no DDs. You're dead. There are no DDs. Who did that? Go on. Push right into the cruisers. Let's go. I don't think this will be particularly interesting to watch. I mean... Yeah, it's just hunting down some cruisers, which are doing 35 knots. They're faster than my fleet. Hold on, I still have some BCs. <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> Over the rainbow. Yeah, okay. We ended the battle, and uh, there was one surprise. Kaiser Wilhelm der Grosse got hit by two torpedoes. One struck the bow, doing decent amounts of damage. The second one struck the, um, the magazine, causing massive fire aboard the Kaiser and leading to a complete loss of the ship due to fire. So that gave them a couple of victory points, but I still got more. Yet, I don't like losing one of my Auto-class battleships. I really, really don't like that. These are very valuable ships, very useful warriors, and sadly, we're going to have to do with one fewer. So... That was another part of the Austro-Hungarian fleet. Let's see if they also want to tango with the big boys, because I still have the rest of the formation, which has, I believe, not yet seen an encounter. But, yep, here it is. Oh boy, here it is. Oh my god, this is going to be an FPS disaster. FPS disaster. Look at all these DD. How many ships are these? Oof. See, I cannot really split up my force, because then I won't have enough firepower, and let alone have enough ammo. I cannot very well split up their force either, because the AI simply won't. So they got... Whatever, I'll let the game tally it out. Here's the tally. 135 Austro-Hungarian ships. Versus 52 German ships. Which, for my doing for my fleet management is a really big fleet. The majority of my firepower is not in battleships but in battle cruisers. For them it's the other way around. They have the majority of their firepower in battleships and they have eight battle cruisers. All this trash is going to take a while to clean up. Fortunately I have a lot of heavy cruisers which will be very instrumental in doing that. Managing all the DDs is going to be a nightmare. In fact managing this whole battle is going to be a bit of a nightmare. As it turned out, this battle was undoable. The battle was simply not running at an acceptable FPS. I had too many ships, they had even more ships. I could, if I was lucky, get three to four frames. Um, it was just terrible. So, I have decided to end this campaign a bit different in a story way. Because auto resolve is not something I want to do. And I need to wrap this campaign up. So, here is the final entry. The battle lasted for three days. It would later be called the Clash of Corfu. The Austro-Hungarian fleet was defeated, but at a serious cost to the German navy. Wave after wave of torpedoes was launched by the Austro-Hungarian cruisers and destroyers. As good as the Admiral was, his ships could not dodge every single torpedo. The German ships took serious damage. Heavy cruiser Turingia took two torpedoes and was forced to withdraw. After the war, she was turned into a museum ship. Battle cruiser Mars went into battle once more. The old girl had already seen so much, and this was just another battle for her. Her guns were instrumental in sinking a dozen light cruisers, saving her sisters from further torpedo damage. One of the enemy battleships identified Mars and took aim at her. Their 17 inch shells slammed through the B turret of the Mars and knocked it out. The Mars survived the battle and was fully repaired. The ship still serves as a training ship for new cadets and inspires them to this day. Light cruiser Ariadne was part of the German vanguard. Whereas in the past she took down several British battle cruisers alone, she was now tasked with eliminating the enemy destroyer screen. 
In doing so, she had one of the most dangerous tasks in the battle. She paid the ultimate price. Already badly damaged from the alien shells of enemy heavy cruisers, her captain steered her right into the path of a dozen torpedoes, preventing those torpedoes from impacting the damaged heavy cruiser Hertha. Ariadne died as she fought, with everything she had in service of the rest of the fleet. Battleship Braunschweig was the big surprise during the battle. While she'd had a rocky start with inaccurate and slow guns, over the last decade she'd been upgraded time and again. This made her mature and ready for the clash of Corfu. Her 18-inch guns delivered sheer death with every salvo they fired. Ten years after the war, Braunschweig was scrapped in favor of newer, more advanced warships. Her a turret was removed and preserved, and still sits in front of the Admiralty to this day. After the unconditional surrender of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Europe saw peace for several decades. At last, the big guns fell silent. As much as they had brought death, they also brought life. They ensured that the nations sought to work together rather than fight it out on the high seas. The various nations worked together to grow their respective economies instead of their navies. Germany's Chancellor, however, was replaced. Though he brought Europe peace through firepower, his hawkish views and urge for ever bigger guns were not what Europe needed at this time. So that's it guys, that's the campaign. I hope you enjoyed it and I thank you for following along. I really enjoyed reading all of your comments, your stories, your backstories, your side stories, everything that you imagined about these ships. Life aboard the ships, the life of the Chancellor, or the Admiral turned Chancellor, if you want to read all about it again, if you want to just go through the logs in your own pace, you can by becoming a channel member or by joining my Patreon program. Both are linked down below in the description, and any support you can provide is much appreciated. Again, I hope you enjoyed. I'll be back with a campaign at some point, but for now I might just take a little break after wrapping this one up. Thank you for watching. I'll be back soon.